Uh, <clears throat> today, I'd like to talk about how I implemented the quasi static viscous elasticity and polar elasticity into the uh, dynamic earthquake sequence simulation with spectral boundary integral equation method. So, today I'll be talking mainly about the uh, deformation of the medium, not the friction. But um, uh, I hope it uh, may be uh, interesting uh, for uh, people trying to get some um, uh, spectral boundary integral equation method code in public. So uh, let me start from here. Uh, so in the seismic cycle, there's different uh, processes there, which are interrelated, uh, including stress accumulation to the fault and nucleation of the rupture, dynamic earthquake rupture, and we, we may have after three and uh, relocking of the paths. And the result of each process, of course, uh, depends on its initial condition, uh, which is determined by the proceeding, uh, preceding process. So in order to get the, uh, in order to solve for the uh, behavior of the fault, which hosts repeating earthquakes, all the processes should be simulated consistently in a single framework. And as this single framework, uh, the continuum mechanics is probably the uh, strongest candidate because we use that to analyze the geophysical data. Uh, then the simulation of such uh, a multi-scale, uh, multi-time scale uh, processes are not straightforward. And uh, I'd like to explain how uh, Rice and Ben Zion 1996 uh, makes it possible. So uh, in the uh, boundary integral equation method, uh, the traction on the fault tau uh, can be represented like this, where V is a slip rate and rho is a density and C is some wave number. And uh, this tau naught is the traction without any slip on the fault. If the fault uh, were glued up and there is no displacement there, relative displacement there, uh, tau naught is the uh, traction spatial temporal distribution. And this, uh, the final term, this one, uh, this is actually the impedance effect, uh, which uh, is some uh, proportional, proportional uh, let's say, the, some linear uh, relationship between the instantaneous value of fraction and the instantaneous value of the uh, local slip rate. So this term is sometimes called radiation dumping, and we can kind of pull out of the, the spatial temporal convolution explicitly like this. And this phi is a remaining uh, wave-mediated stress transfer from the previous uh, slip rate uh, somewhere on the fault. And uh, calculation of this phi requires spatial temporal convolution. And if we calculate a simulate based on this equation for a very long uh, history of the fault, then uh, we have to store history of slip rate, of course, and it grows with computation. And ultimately, the, uh, the, this history, it sees available memory. Uh, so what uh, Rice and Ben Zion did uh, is to split this phi into two terms, phi of static and phi of dynamic, where phi of static is the static effect left after radiation of waves there. Uh, if the fault were instant, instantly good up. And this phi static uh, depends on the current, uh, just the current slip distribution if the, uh, if the medium is uh, purely elastic. And this, uh, the remaining part, phi dynamic is uh, by definition phi minus phi static. This is a country, uh, this is the, uh, you know, kind of uh, wave radiated, uh, mediated stress transfer and the contribution from the old uh, slip increment diminishes with time. Then we can uh, truncate the temporal convolution of this uh, phi dynamic. And then we can uh, carry on the long simulation with finite memory requirement uh, for an elastic medium. So uh, this is how uh, uh, we did the earthquake sequence simulation in the uh, elastic uh, medium. And today's talk is on how I implemented the time-dependent quasi-static deformation in pi of static uh, 
as an example, it's a, a viscoelastic relaxation or for elasticity. And I want to do that, uh, I want to do that with, without significant additional computational cost, which is uh, history storage and convolution. So uh, let me start from the, the easiest example, example one, uh, which I published, we published uh, in uh, 2019 uh, on the maximum viscoelasticity uh, in anti-plane uh, anti uh, 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 problems. So uh, let my fault uh, is on the uh, Z equals zero and 2D problem is in, in the X, X, Y plane. And X is the direction along the fault. And uh, the, the Fourier transform, spatial Fourier transform of this phi of static is this uh, capital phi of static. And this, uh, the Fourier transform distribution, a uh, Fourier transform slip, slip distribution is this uh, capital D. And uh, for elasticity, uh, the consecutive law of the media is like this, just a uh, uh, displacement gradient is proportional to the uh, 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 stress. And in mass, mass viscous elasticity, this is uh, in this form. And if we do the uh, Laplace transformation in terms of time, uh, we just put this tilde. Uh, above the uh, uh, Laplace transformed things. And this mu, uh, mu tilde is uh, something like this, where this S is the, the Laplace transformation uh, variable. And if we solve for the uh, uh, stress change due to sinusoidal uh, slip distribution on the fault, we, find, we finally get uh, this kind of expression. In elasticity, uh, stress change is just uh, proportional to the slip, uh, Fourier transform slip, and uh, multiplied by the wave number and the shear modulus. And in the viscoelastic medium, this we can just put tilde above this mu, which is uh, you know well-known correspondence principle of the viscoelasticity. So this is quite straightforward here. And uh, the, the question is how to calculate this uh, static stress change. Uh, in the viscoelastic media. So uh, the, the standard way is probably uh, uh, doing the inverse uh, Laplace transformation. And uh, if we uh, use this uh, simplate formulation, it, then uh, this uh, stress change can be calculated like this, where we have this uh, temporal uh, convolution uh, of this simplate distribution and uh, uh, the stress relaxation modulus, where we have this TC is the relaxation time. But uh, direct calculation of this, this guy uh, requires convolution, uh, temporal convolution, and we have to store this separate history, which I hate because uh, in, the, uh, in calculation of the dynamic part, uh, those history storage and convolution computation for the convolution is, uh, are the limiting factors uh, defining the, the uh, affordable problem size. So I want to calculate this guy uh, in a different way cheaply. And then what I did is uh, like this. This, uh, uh, this can be uh, uh, expressed maybe like this, where uh, here mu and, mu and uh, uh, k uh, divided by two is just the uh, elastic Green's function. And this D effective is a kind of effective uh, Fourier transformed slip, which uh, gives viscoelastic stress change if convolved with the elastic green function. And this uh, effective stress uh, slip distribution uh, can be calculated quite easily because uh, just derivative, time derivative of this guy, uh, which is this one, can be uh, expressed like this. So uh, by doing this, uh, the temporal conversion is not needed, and we can just uh, integrate this simple. Uh, ODE uh, every time step, then we can <clears throat> uh, implement the viscoelastic relaxation without additional computational cost. I mean, without significant additional computational cost. So actually this uh, reformulation is uh, uh, quite, let's say, I would say uh, uh, famous 
maybe in, in the uh, community of friction because this is exactly what Greener uh, 1983 did for formulation of the latent state frictional, latent, latent state dependent frictional law. So let me just show uh, uh, an application example. I assume just a uh, uh, 2D simulation and uh, this is the distribution of A and B and negative A minus B region in, in, the, uh, in the central central part of the patch. And if we do uh, the earthquake seeking simulation, uh, I put I, uh, three examples here. The left one is just uh, elastic case uh, where the uh, relaxation modular relaxation time is infinite. And if I uh, decrease this relaxation time, or uh, uh, as the viscoelastic relaxation becomes more and more uh, significant, firstly, the recurrence interval of the earthquake uh, uh, increases like this. And finally, we get permanently stuck uh, uh, patch. So uh, this is kind of, um, yeah, this is seismic to a seismic transition, but uh, different from uh, uh, the, the hope bifurcation. And another uh, maybe interesting thing we found in this simulation is the dependency on the uh, initial condition. So uh, these, these are three examples of uh, uh, trajectory at the center of the patch. Uh, horizontal axis is the three plate and vertical axis is the friction correction towards the shear stress. And uh, we have uh, this repeating earthquake uh, solution attractor, but if the initial condition is uh, too far away from that, it just uh, stuck like this, uh, going to towards the left. Uh, and so this uh, initial condition dependency uh, is, uh, I think, it's a significant problem because uh, in Typically in elastic earthquake seeking simulation, because we spin up the system, uh, we sometimes uh, did not care much about the initial condition. Uh, but uh, it may be crucial in the viscoelastic medium. Okay, uh, I introduced the mode three, uh, uh, the, the, the easiest uh, one to implement. And next, I'd like to show some uh, way to implement the mode two uh, Maxwell viscoelasticity. And uh, the problem is, is problem setting is uh, similar. And uh, <clears throat> in uh, mode two or in plane problems, we have uh, isotropic uh, component and deviatric component of the stress and strain. And uh, for typical, typical for rock, we ignore the volumetric uh, viscosity, and we consider just the, the, the relaxation of the deviatory part. And then uh, the Fourier Laplace transformed static, uh, static stress change is written like this using the corresponding principle. And this uh, uh, bulk modulus is just the normal bulk modulus, and this uh, shear modulus has tilde on top. And after uh, going through the same uh, 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 manipulation, and I got some uh, ODE expression for this effective flip. But this time we have two, we need to define two uh, uh, memory variables, and they have different uh, time constant. And, uh, but they are simple ODEs, and we can uh, simulate. Uh, I, I, we can just uh, calculate that by uh, integration uh, every time step. So uh, I think uh, many other uh, linear viscoelasticity or linear uh, uh, rheology can be implemented uh, in a similar way. And uh, as example three, I'd like to talk about the poroelastic rebound. I hope I still have time, yes. And uh, the progress rebound is obviously, uh, if we have cross seismic strip, we have some distribution of volumetric strain distribution, which causes pore pressure distribution uh, uh, in instantly. And then it flows because of the, the gradient of that. And it causes post, post seismic deformation uh, due to the pro expansion. 
And here is some uh, constitutive law for the isotropic linear for elasticity having many parameters. <clears throat> but uh, the motivation why I uh, try to simulate that is uh, the following. Uh, so there is some previous paper uh, suggesting or implying that the, the, the uh, poor elastic rebound could cause some after slip uh, of the fault in the cost time slip parts, which is rarely observed actually. And the first example is uh, maybe this one, Deuteronian Chen, 1991. Uh, they uh, simulated the, uh, the uh, open crack, but drained open crack in a sense that the, the open part has the constant uh, pop pressure. And then uh, fluid flow in the media uh, causes additional opening like this uh, with time. And because the in-plane uh, open crack and shared crack has the same uh, displacement, uh, uh, I would say uh, the, the well, relative displacement distribution in time equals zero and infinity. Uh, this part looks like uh, after slip of the uh, earthquake and that the amount is like a uh, little less than 10% or so, it, which is uh, very large. And another example is uh, in 2003, 2006, uh, Yamashita uh, simulated the shear crack on the biomaterial interface, biomaterial poroelastic interface. And uh, he has some uh, cost seismic slip distribution and then uh, following cost seismic slip uh, like this. And they have uh, after slip interior of this uh, patch of the cost seismic slip. So uh, there are several papers uh, like this. Uh, suggesting uh, post potential after stripping in the cosmic strip patch, but it is rarely observed or confirmed, I would say, because, uh, because of the smoothing of the inversion of the geodetic data. And <clears throat> in those um, papers, they assume the constant interface strengths like open crack or just uh, kinetic friction law, fr friction, friction coefficient. But uh, in the radiant state friction, we have the time dependent strengthening of the fault, which is uh, healing, and which uh, could uh, suppress this kind of uh, after sleep. So I, I wanted to implement the poroelastic rebound into dynamic earthquake sequence simulation, uh, which uses the radiant state friction. So uh, here's some uh, equations. Uh, constitutive law and uh, using these uh, dependent parameters and the green function is there, it's published. We can, I can just, you know, uh, use this. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, this is the uh, stress change due to the concentrated permanent slip at, uh, at the origin. And in order to use this in the spectral boundary integral equation method, First, I evaluated uh, this traction uh, on the fault, which is like this. And uh, using this, we can write this uh, pi of static uh, with the spatial temporal convolution of this Green's function and slip rate. And in order to uh, use it in the spectral method, I do the, you know, the uh, spatial full rate transform and then the spatial uh, convolution becomes just multiplication, and here is the uh, Fourier, uh, sorry, uh, 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 green function in the uh, in the wave number domain, which is looks like this. And here, uh, this mu prime is kind of effective stiffness, that is mu divided well, divided by one minus uh, the Poisson's ratio, and this star can be u or d or undrained and drained response. And this F is a function, universal function, which uh, is independent of the uh, physical property. Uh, it looks like this. And this F actually uh, represents the transition uh, between the undrained condition and the drained condition. And uh, if I choose the, the undrained re refer uh, response as a reference, my effective slip is like this, uh, in this way. And I'd like to uh, calculate it. I, I'd like to calculate this D of effective cheaply without doing the convolution. So 
I tried to find the ODE for DEF, but uh, I couldn't figure out, but still I don't want to conduct the convolution. So then uh, what I did is to numerically uh, approximate this guy. So this is how F looks like. Uh, the, the, this is the linear uh, scale and the, the right figure shows the logarithmic scale. And it looks like exponential, you know, this is uh, quite straight. And if this D of effective and, and K, uh, F, sorry, F is appears here. And if F can be approximated by a summation of or combination of uh, multiple decay processes having different uh, uh, time time constant, then D of effective can be uh, approximated as summation of uh, contribution from those uh, different decay processes, and each of them have very simple ODE. Then uh, this can be just calculated uh, every time step by simple uh, time integration. And this is how the approximation to F works. Uh, just you know, standard uh, least squares fitting for this A of I and T of I works. And of course, as increasing the number of the uh, memory variables, the, the approximation becomes better and better. And uh, I chose uh, 18 memory variables, which leads to the numerical error less than 10 to minus six uh, relative to the difference between the drain and undrain responses. So the 18 memory variables for each uh, wave number actually uh, sounds a little bit large, uh, but um, when I implemented the summer pressurization, I mean, the uh, frictional, uh, frictional heating and power pressure increase on the fault, uh, I used a similar, uh, a little bit different, but similar method, but I defined about 120 memory or state variables in this case, uh, for each uh, uh, special grid to calculate the summer pressurization and it costs uh, negligibly. So 18 memory variables uh, cost over almost nothing. And in the integration, I use the second order uh, exponential time differencing method, which is unconditionally stable. Uh, this unconditional stability is uh, very important in doing the earthquake sequence simulation because it allows logarithmically wide range of delta t. Okay, let me show some examples. Uh, let me first show the reference elastic case uh, using the aging law, just you know, uh, simple one rate weighting patch in the middle of the fault. And this is how uh, the uh, rather simple earthquake sequence looks like. And uh, there is no or uh, no visible after strip interior of the, or in the middle of the cosine strip, strip patch. And the, the left uh, right figures show uh, shear stress on the fault or at the center of the fault and uh, strength there and strip plate there as a function of uh, logarithmic time after uh, an earthquake uh, before the next earthquake. And here's some cutoff time, cut off time uh, which is uh, uh, L, L, I, I mean, this uh, L, 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 yeah, L divided by uh, cosseismic triplet. And uh, if I put the uh, turn on the uh, poor elasticity, uh, the aftersleep actually looks very similar. I mean, no, no, earth, no aftersleep is uh, observed uh, visible. So uh, in, in turning on the poor elasticity, the, the most poorly uh, <clears throat> constrained uh, parameter is this uh, diffusion, diffusion coefficient of the power pressure or the permeability, uh, which varies for orders of magnitude. So I uh, tried different values uh, in, uh, in a way that this diffusion time scale uh, is uh, from 10 to the minus eighth or ninth, uh, ten, 10 to the minus ninth to the 10 times the recurrence interval of these earthquakes. So this is an example of uh, diffusion time scale is 10 to the minus six of the recurrence time. And uh, the 10 to the minus six is here. And about 10 to the minus seventh, about, I mean, 
uh, about 0.1 times this diffusion time scale, we have slight uh, this uh, shear stress increase, which is due to the poor elastic rebound. But you know this uh, uh, you know the 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 amplitude of strengthening or healing is much much larger than this stress buildup. So that's the simplate uh, evolution is mostly controlled by this healing. So if I compare uh, the traction strings and uh, siplate at the center of the fault uh, for different uh, diffusion patient, uh, we have some loading, but it's say about one megapascal or so, and strength doesn't change much uh, because uh, in this period, the, the aging terms uh, dominate the, and the siplate, the change the siplate doesn't affect the evolution of the strings. And siplate increases by a factor of two or three, which is minor, uh, I would say, in this time period. So uh, it seems that the strengthening or healing dominate the uh, shear stress. And uh, my next question is how about the siplo, which has different uh, characteristics in the uh, healing behavior? And now uh, I tried the similar thing for the siplo, but uh, siplo requires a uh, huge computer, computational resources so that I regularize that so that uh, the L uh, increases uh, at high siplate so that we have some relaxation time here. So in the introduction of this critical time or uh, uh, relaxation time uh, helps because it uh, makes the numerically resolvable rupture front and growing fracture energy and, uh, and this actually gives the lower limit in the process zone length. And similar uh, idea uh, is actually suggested by uh, Andrews 2004 uh, in a time, uh, he, he suggested the time wakening model for a uh, simulation of single dynamic rupture. But anyway, uh, this is the undrained elastic case. And uh, you know, this equation size is quite much smaller than the aging law. And there's no visible after sleep here. And uh, although the uh, sleep law doesn't have explicit uh, time dependent healing in the uh, state evolution law, we have logarithmic healing here, uh, but, but the slope here is smaller than B. And now if I turn on the uh, polyelastic rebound here, uh, the situation is quite similar to the aging law. Uh, there's still uh, no visible after sleep here. And this is the effect, uh, or I mean the yeah, effect of the polyelasticity uh, in traction, strength, and sleep plate. And uh, similarly, we have this traction increase, additional loading uh, due to the polyelastic rebound. And at that point, we have uh, increase in the strength. Uh, this is absent in the aging low case. And siplate increases a little bit, but this effect is much smaller than in the aging low. Uh, so uh, because in the slip low, uh, uh, the strength evolution requires slip increment so that this traction increase uh, and slight increase in the siplate uh, causes strengthening, which uh, gives a negative feedback in this acceleration. So uh, the polyelasticity, uh, polyelastic rebound uh, has actually smaller effect in the sleep plate compared to the aging law, uh, sorry, sleep law uh, compared to the uh, aging law. So uh, I, maybe let me skip this, sorry. And uh, here's some summary. So I uh, introduced some examples of time-dependent deformation implemented into earthquake sequence simulations of spectral boundary integral equation method, uh, Maxwell viscoelasticity, mode two and three, and uh, for elasticity. And I hope many other linear rheologies can be treated in a similar manner. And uh, temporal evolution, uh, temporal evolution, uh, convolution, so convolution was avoided by definition of memory variables and uh, reformulation of the convolution, temporal convolution into all these of those uh, memory variables. And the time integration of those, I mean, those uh, memory variables cost uh, negligibly compared with the temporal convolution for the uh, dynamic 
uh, well mediated transport. Oh, thank you very much.